Hi, this is Alfauzia Nihar from At Home Tuition. Welcome to our session today. The topic that we are going to discuss in our today's video is Properties of Probability. When working with probabilities, it is important to understand some of its basic, most basic properties. So in this video, we will shortly discuss the most basic properties. To understand the statement and proof of the basic properties, you should also make yourself familiar with the three important axioms in probability. So, first let us discuss the axioms and then we can move towards the properties and its proofs. Axiom number one says that the probability of an event, here I have taken event A, it can be any event. The probability of that event is a real number greater than or equal to zero. So this is one of the important axiom. Now let's move to axiom number two. Second axiom says that the probability that at least one of all the possible outcomes of a process will occur is one, such as rolling a die. And now let's move to axiom number three. This third axiom is applicable when you take two events that are mutually exclusive. So we have a formula for this one. Consider two events A and B that are mutually exclusive. If two events A and B are mutually exclusive, then the probability of either A or B occurring is probability of A occurring plus the probability of B occurring. So these are the three axioms. Please have a glance over this. Now let us see the properties and their proofs. In, in the proof, we will be using the axioms wherever necessary. Here is the property number one statement. If the event A is a subset of the event B, then probability of A is less than or equal to probability of B. So this statement can also be written in symbolic form. Let me write that. If A is the subset of B, then probability of A is less than or equal to probability of B. Okay, now let us see the proof. Consider two events, A and B, such that A is the subset of B. So whenever you get a theorem and you are asked to show the proof, you have to read the statement carefully and then take down all the given information. From the given information along with the help of other properties or axioms, you can easily prove the theorem and get the answer whatever you require. So here the given information is A is a subset of B. So we are going to take this one and I will also give you a diagram. From the diagram you can understand that there are a B. How can you define the B? You have two things. A is a subset of B and this is A complement intersection B. Am I right? So B can be written as this union this. And also you know that these two events are mutually exclusive. Am I right? So from this point itself you, you can uh, get an idea which axiom to be applied here. So you can use the mutually exclusive axiom. The third axiom which we discussed just before. From axiom 3, you can write a formula for the probability of the event A and probability of the event A dash intersection B. Hope you are clear with this step. Now, you can use the first axiom. First axiom tells us that probability of any event is greater than or equal to 0. So, if you take this, you may not get your answer. So, I am going to apply that concept for this probability. Probability of any event, whatever the event may be it is greater than or equal to 0. So if this axiom is applicable, then we can easily say that this will turn into probability of A less than or equal to probability of B. Hence we prove this property. Hope you are clear with this property, property number 1. Okay. This property has a very useful application. We write A belongs to B or A implies B. This means that if A occurs, then and B also occurs. So A implies B is same as A is the subset of B. So that will imply probability of A less than or equal to probability of B. You can also keep this keep this point in application. You'll be uh, this property will be applicable in many problems. Now let us move on to the next property, property number two. Second property says that probability of A any event is lying in between zero and one for each event A. Our first axiom says that probability of any event is greater than or equal to 0. Am I right? So it is enough if you prove the right side of this one. Consider a empty event here. So from the first axiom, it is true for every event A that A is the subset of 
an empty event. So from the first property you can say that probability of A is less than or equal to probability of epsilon. By the second axiom you can say that probability of uh, the event, the sum of all this one is equal to 1. So using the second axiom here it follows that probability of A is less than or equal to 1. That's it for probability property number 2. This property formalizes the scale for the probabilities given the axioms. Okay, now let us move on to the third property. Third property says probability of an empty set is equal to 0. Choose any event A. Then the two events A and the empty set are mutually exclusive. Am I right? So we are going to use the third axiom here. Third axiom for mutually exclusive events. Probability of A union empty set is equal to probability of A plus probability of empty. So since A union empty is equal to A, right? Any event union of nothing is the event only. Am I right? So this gives that these two are mutually exclusive events. If you subtract probability of A from both these sides, you will get probability of this empty set is equal to 0. Some algebraic step. Hope you are clear with this property. It would be rather strange if the probability of an empty step was anything other than 0. So it is reassuring to confirm that this is not so. So the prob this probability of empty set is equal to 0 only as expected. Now let us move on to the fourth property. Consider any event A. Probability of complement of that event is equal to 1 minus probability of that event. Now let us see the proof of this property. Consider the events A and A dash. These two events are mutually exclusive. Am I right? So using the axiom number 3. So by the third axiom we can define that probability of A union A complement is nothing but probability of A plus probability of A complement. And A and A complement is nothing but the entire set. Am I right? I denote using this alphabet. Okay, and therefore probability of A complement is just the leftover when you subtract the probability of A from the probability of the entire set. So according to the second axiom, second axiom says probability of any event is equal to 1. Am I right? If you take this one as 1, you cannot prove this property. So I am going to take this event. So probability of any event is equal to 1. So probability of the entire set is also 1. So here if I plug in 1, I get the required answer. Hence the proof of the property number 4. Hope you are clear with this property. This property is surprisingly useful and it is applied frequently. We uh, use this property in many places in problem solving word problem. That much frequently in probability. And uh, it is also very effective. When the probability of the event of interest is difficult to calculate directly. So when something is very difficult to calculate directly, you can take the negative portion. Like if you are asked to find the probability of something and you do not know and if the calculation takes so much time, you better take the probability of not that event. Probability of not that event is equal to 1 minus probability of that event. Okay. Now let's move on to the fifth property. Property 5 is the addition theorem. For all events A and B, probability of A union B is equal to probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A intersection B. I'll give you a table as well as a diagram. Consider a set. Here I'm going to take A and B. Let the red one be A and the green one be B. This region is A and B intersection, the common region for both A and B. And this region the empty region in the A would be A intersection B complement and this is A complement intersection B. Am I right? This is the pictorial representation of the event space, this epsilon. And let me give you the table also. A intersection B, A intersection B complement, A complement intersection B, A complement intersection B complement. So this is the table representation of the addition theorem. The impression we get from the diagram, from the table, or just using the basic logic is that if we add together the probability of A and the probability of B, then A intersection B is included in both the events. So it has been counted twice. Hence, to obtain the probability of at least one of A and B occurring, that is, to obtain the probability of A union B, we need to subtract the probability of A intersection B from the addition probability of A and probability of B. 
So this justifies the formula given by the addition theorem. That is nothing but a property number 5. To devise a formal proof of the addition theorem, we construct mutually exclusive events in a helpful way and we will be using the third axiom of the probability to prove this one. A union B is A union A complement intersection B and B is nothing but A intersection B union A, in A complement intersection B. So you can apply the third axiom here. By applying the third axiom to the first of these relationships, you will be getting probability of A plus probability of A complement intersection B. And if you are applying the third axiom for the second relationship, you will be getting probability of A is equal to probability of this event, A intersection B plus probability of this event, A complement intersection B. So from this, you get the required result. So this is how we prove the property number 5 addition theorem. Hope you are clear with the three axioms of the probability and the five important properties of probability. In case if you get any query regarding this topic, kindly let me know.